you know, for the, for the S&Cs listening, you mentioned the practical skills that, that um, Charlie had mentioned. Um, is that why you started working in a gym at your uni? Yeah, just, um, yeah, both from like uh, so-called soft skills, like um, just communication, but then also, um, you know, actually making a few program decisions, um, you know, problem solving on the fly. If, you know, you've got clients with a injury or back pain or, uh, you know, just don't want to do it for whatever reason, yeah. um, you know, how to deal with those situations, even though um, they might start, they might be sort of may seem a world away from what I do now. Um, a lot of the, um, a lot of the, um, you know, key themes are the same. And you've mentioned a couple that have helped uh, shape your career early days. Are there some other mentors that have helped you get to where you are today? Yeah. So after that, um, so BA's uh, stayed as a mentor um, since that time. Um, and then uh, from after I was at West Perth, I interned at, at West Coast. So um uh glenn stewart high performance manager there he's been um probably my biggest mentor for for the last nearly 10 years um uh really helped me out and helped me get my current current role um warren covert who's um also at west coast has, has been a great help as well um and then yeah just there's there's several people along the way just here and there that that help you out with specific areas um too many to name and I'd probably miss a few, which would get me into trouble. Athlete Alliance, uh, what would be the best way to get in contact if you're an athlete or, or if you're a coach in Perth wanting to get some experience? Yeah, so um, through our website, which is www.athletealliance.com.au. Yep. Um, also, we're on Instagram, which I think is Athlete Alliance WA um, cool. and Facebook, or um, email at admin at athletelines.com.au. What's a way that you upskill your methods now? Um, what's one of your favorite, or what's some of your favorite ways to keep getting yourself better or, or strengthening your, your craft? Yeah, um, I actually, I read a lot outside of um, strength and conditioning nowadays. Like uh, what really fascinates me is um, sort of decision-making processes and, um, you know, uh, how we we take in and analyse information and then action that. Um, so, you know, reading from, from other spheres, um, you know, Daniel Kahneman, um, Annie Duke, those sorts of uh, thinkers that sort of, because uh, we, we deal in a, a real uncertain world, particularly in elite sport, um, where we make a lot of decisions based on probabilities. Um, sometimes we... Um, you know, we know what goes into the um, the probability and the environment's certain and sometimes it's uncertain. What would be your most recommended recovery aspect that should be implemented in young athletes and why is it so important? Um, okay, thanks for your question, Sky. Um, I'm probably not going to go too left field with this one um, and say um, sleep and nutrition are your big rocks. So... Um, Basically, everything else is a, is a one percenter. So, um, making sure that you've got a good sleep routine, so that um, you know you're getting eight nine hours a night uh, where possible, um, and then making sure that you're you're eating well. So, a, a good diet um, that's you know got sufficient energy to to fuel your activity, um, protein for recovery, um, and just just having good habits from that way. In terms of any other um, sort of recovery modalities, I'm a big believer in sort of finding what um, what works for you and what makes what you enjoy the most. In terms of their like training loads and um, their strength sessions, what would sort of be your recommendations? Um, mainly pre-season at the moment because our season's been knocked off. But what would sort of what would your focus be for someone like that that doesn't have the access to train as much and spend as much time at the club as a professional athlete? Yeah. So my biggest advice would be um, don't try and shoehorn an elite athlete's program um, into your program. You can you can make your program, you know, elite within the constraints you have, but don't try and take an AFL program and put it in where you, you know, you're doing two or three sessions a day because you're just going to end up putting yourself in a hole. So um, it might just be small things like uh, picking your, your on legs days and then you you're doing your, your on-track sessions and then you're doing your leg weights straight after. 
Uh, physiologically, you know, it's not optimal, but if you do it with intent, you're still going to get good benefit out of it. So um, that would be my recommendation. Make sure that you're getting enough recovery in. Like in terms of the actual strength sessions, do you tend to focus? If you're limited with times and the amount of sessions, do you have, um, are you focusing more on compound sort of movements? Are you focusing more on like injury prevention sort of movements or, you know, a bit of a mix of everything? Yeah, so for, a, for an AFL player, I would definitely have um, a couple of big rocks that you're really focusing on. So um, your main leg lift, which um, my, I would advocate is just whatever you feel most comfortable loading up with so you can actually get a really good force production stimulus. So whether that's a, a box squat or some sort of squat variation, whether it's a trap bar deadlift, whether it's a, some sort of split squat variation, any variation that you're um, you're comfortable that you're going to load up on and actually get a decent stimulus out of it. Um, make sure that you're getting some sort of eccentric hamstring loading. So um, both hip and knee base. So whether you go an RDL and a Nordic or um, an eccentric leg curl, a weighted slider curl, something like that.